Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Andrew Narayanan and welcome back to AP for Teens. It's another AP Psychology video. Today, as you can see by the title, it's thinkers, multitaskers, it's all the same in psychology. Now last time in AP Psychology, we discussed the following. We discussed what is psychology, who made us learn it, and what happened after the invention of this great subject. As always, click right there for the link in the video. There's a sort of box sort of thing as if you scroll over that bullet point you'll be able to watch that video and be able to understand what we're going to be talking about in this video ignore the Greek Olympians uh, we've got a new schedule out or I've got a new schedule out I'm not working with anybody else that's hopefully gonna make these videos come out more frequently so there you go Greeks be happy in this video we're gonna be discussing the following two things we're gonna discuss the big people involved in the thinking revolution and even though it's copyrighted by me it's not really copyrighted by me although I do think I, f I feel like I termed that first uh, and we're also gonna be talking about a bunch of vocabulary in this channel uh, starting now effectively all the vocabulary words are gonna be bolded and they're really gonna be brought out to you know make you understand that this is a really important word that you're going to need to know for the AP exam. So let's get started. As always, we open the curtains and begin. The big philosophers that we have to know, who are they? Well, you have to know René Descartes. Descartes. Descartes is how you, you know, if you say it with a French accent, is Descartes. Uh, I'm American, taking French, and I probably am pronouncing it wrong. Uh, you also need to know John Locke, that's a pretty basic name, Thomas Hobbes, Charles Darwin, William Wundt. Edward Titchener and William James. All seven of these people are extremely important. However, as you can tell by the length of the video, we're probably not discussing all seven of them. In fact, we're only discussing the ones you can see that aren't behind the giant stop sign. You could ignore the rest of them. We're going to focus on Rene Descartes, John Locke, and Thomas Hobbes. Now, Rene Descartes, and before you guys mention it, yes, I do know that there is supposed to be an E in Rene. I know there's some. I know my channel isn't very big right now, and uh, I don't have any comments going on, but I know some people are really, really picky about that. It's in that accent aigu, for those that are really picky about that. You can see a picture of the great man himself in the top right, René Descartes. He was born in 1596, died in 1650, and was a French philosopher, mathematician, scientist, you know, basic run-of-the-mill genius. And he, he has been deemed to be the father of modern Western philosophy. Now, by Western philosophy, these days when you say West, you say the United States. Back then, obviously, the United States not existing, and this entire side of the world not existing, the West being Great Britain, France, and as René Descartes was from France, he is deemed to be the modern Western philosophy genius. His big achievements, well, he believed that a physical world is under observable rules and laws. All right? However, Everything but humans are predictable. He believed that humans were set, you know, above, you know, regular animals and things like that. He believed that the mind controls the body, and the body provides the mind with sensory input. This was something really big that he believed in, and he believed this happened in the pineal gland, which is located deep in the brain at the top of the brainstem. And we currently aren't exactly sure what it does, but back then, Rene Descartes determined that that was the reason that we were able to do what we did. That was the main brain center. He also coined the term a reflex, which are things that aren't controlled by the mind, an immediate unconscious reaction to an event, such as you know pulling your hand away from a stub or the old doctor experiment where you hit your uh, knee with a hammer. Those are all reflexes, which is a term that you probably know as well. John Locke. Our guy number two, uh, if we want to joke around about this, bachelor number two, although I'm pretty sure he was married, don't quote me on that. Uh, background knowledge on the good-looking man at the top right, he was born in 1632, died in 1704, an English philosopher and physician, and known as the father of liberalism, but not exactly the political type that we know, but at the same time, it kind of does lead to that, so you could say he's the father, technically, of the modern-day Democratic Party, if you want to go that far. I wouldn't, just because of the time differences. Uh, John Locke, his big achievements, he extended Descartes' application of natural laws, he included humans as well, and eventually brought up his school of thought called empiricism. 
the acquisition of truth through observations and experiences. He wrote a book called The Essay Concerning Human Understanding and proposed that humans are born knowing nothing, using the term a tabula rasa. For all of you Latin fans out there, I'm probably saying that wrong, you probably know how to say it. Uh, it's a blank slate used basically to describe the mind of a child. Everything that we have from birth is completely blank. We don't know anything. And as time goes on, we eventually learn things. His big term was nothing is innate. All knowledge has to be derived from different experiences. He emphasized a big battle. He emphasized nurture over nature, a battle that we'll be talking about later on in this series. The final guy we're going to discuss today is Thomas Hobbes. You can see him in the top right. He was born in 1588 and died in 1679, an English philosopher, but contributed in basically every field that you could think of in the 1600s. Anything that you can think of, he probably had some say in it. His famous book is The Leviathan, something that you might have read in your social studies classes, actually, depending on whether or not you talk about social contracts and other things like that. Best known, obviously, for his polit political sorry, philosophy in The Leviathan. His biggest achievements are the idea that the soul, the spirit, the mind are pointless, meaningless, have absolutely no point in life. He believed in materialism. The only things that exist are matter and energy, and those are the only things that really matter. Matter. Yeah. <laughs> made a mini joke uh consciousness is a byproduct of the brain this whole idea that we are alive that we feel that we see that we can understand yeah it's just extra stuff we're not supposed to be actually doing this he believed in nature over nurture as well which eventually leads to his school of thought kind of different from Locke's, called behaviorism which is another topic that we will be discussing later on now the next guy unfortunately as you can tell by the video length we're not going to be discussing him today. We discussed Rene Descartes, we discussed John Locke, we discussed Thomas Hobbes, and the other four guys will be mentioned in the next episode. But until then, thank you very much for watching. As always, go ahead and subscribe in the section below, leave a comment, like. I finally made social media pages for the first time, despite the fact that I'm a teenager, which 99% of the teenagers make, but I'm apparently that 1%, so Bernie Sanders doesn't like me very much, does he? Um, go ahead and... and do all of the following go ahead and follow me on any of those social medias and i will see you next time thank you very much for watching and as always take care